Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some advanced mixing techniques like side chaining. And in between that time and now, Cubase has come out with a new version, and some of those improvements and enhancements deal specifically with color. So we got to get everybody up to speed on how to custom color your own project. That way, all the changes and improvements coming up will have some context. The first thing we need to understand is that Cubase stores all of its custom colorization changes on a per project basis. So we wanna make sure we make these changes at the beginning of the project and then store those changes as presets where allowed. That's by far and away the fastest. And to do that, we go up to Cubase, we come down to preferences, and this opens up our preferences window. This is where the bulk of our custom colorization changes take place. Let's start with the most popular ones. So if we go to event display first, this is gonna be where we determine what our track view layout looks like and appears. So for example, here you see these lines here that divide our project up into bar markers. By moving the slider to the right, it'll make the lines considerably more bold. And by moving it to the left, it'll drop the opacity. Simply by hitting the apply each time, you'll see the effects take place. If we do the same for event handling, opacity, that's the same thing if we grab and move clips, that kind of stuff. These I like to leave in their default positions because they're a nice balance between being able to see the lines, but not so dark that they kind of overtake things. We can also do the same thing for our audio. These, for example, we can change our waveform brightness. So if we drop this all the way down, our waveform, as you can see here, is gonna get much darker. Opposite direction is gonna be much, much brighter. So hopefully somewhere in between, I like to leave these so that it's a balance between the two. I like to see the waveform itself and the outline. You can change the outline. You can change the fade handle brightness, which is nice. Uh, Next up, if we tab down to MIDI, we've got the ability to change our note brightness and controller brightness for this area. So if we drop that slider and hit apply, you'll see all the notes here in our MIDI track are much darker. And of course, if we drop the controller brightness and hit that, you'll see the controller lanes in the background as well get much darker. If we hit the opposite, then they all get much brighter. So this is a way of controlling the appearance of your MIDI tracks and the notes in there. Let's set those back to the defaults for the time being, and we'll hit apply. And then let's continue to keep tabbing down to our metering. And this is where we can affect the appearance of our metering. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take that very top area, and we're gonna turn that one to red so that we can see that as a true clip light there. Uh, you can set this up any way you like, but you get an idea of how powerful this customization is. Let's continue on down from metering to the user interface. And the first tab we see is the user interface custom color schemes. Cubase gives you four basic ones, two dark ones and two light ones to choose. And these are global color schemes, which include a variety of different changes in each one of the schemes. And then the two lighter ones, gray and blue. These are a little harsh in the eyes, but you can customize them to your taste. And you can also choose your own custom color scheme to make global changes for that. For example, that would be done here. Click OK. And that colorizes your own custom color scheme. If you want to make further changes to your own custom color scheme, let's tab one more down to the custom colors. And this is where we would customize our own color scheme to our taste. So for example, if we wanted to change the ruler background to a completely different color, we'd hit OK, and that would change the ruler background. That would be our custom color scheme. Let's go ahead and hit the defaults and take it back to normal again. Next up, we want to navigate down to track type default colors. This means that every track you create from MIDI all the way down to other is going to be this default color. We can grab, for example, our audio track, and instead of controlling just things like brightness, we can literally control everything about the color. We can drag a color to a new one, click OK, and that audio track and all audio tracks subsequently will have that basic color because now it's going to be defined as the default color. To change it, simply go back into it, click any other, click OK, and our default tracks that are audio, in this case that is, is going to have these default colors. All right, so we have these colored tracks here. Now, we've always been able to color the tracks in a couple different locations. So, for example, click on the base track. If we decide that we don't want that to be the newly defined default color that we just made, we can go up here to one of two locations, the color picker icon, which shows up in our toolbar because if you go over here, right click on an empty space, we can add that color menu icon to our toolbar. So we've talked about this in the previous ones where you can define your own toolbars and get all the toolbars you use most often up here. 
super easy to come up here, right click and define your own. One of those is the color picker and that allows us to come down and pick any of these defined colors to make that track into. If we wanted that to be this color instead, we can. If we wanna set it back to the default we defined, simply go back there as well. We can do the same thing by coming over here to the track inspector, go to the title of the track inspector for that particular track, in this case it's base, find that little arrow to the right, click on that, it opens up the same exact window. We can change the definition and the amount of these available colors. For example, if these are way too bright or they're way too dark, or you want a different palette of colors to choose from for your default color set. That can be done by going up to project, coming down to project colors setup, and you're presented with all of these colors. We've already pre-named one of these super red, but it, can, it starts out as color one. To rename it, you simply click on it, and it becomes whatever you title it. So you can name your own colors. And if you don't want these colors to be these colors, you can simply click on them and do exactly the same thing we did in the defaults color setup. We can grab a brand new color, shades, brightness, change, everything, and click on it, and it becomes that default color. Once we apply, we can go up to our color bars again, and now that color is available as a custom color up here. So if we've selected the base track and we hit that custom color, we've got that. All right, so those customizable color palettes that are choosable for your tracks always show up here in that same window. And again, if we want to alter what those are, this is why it makes more sense to do this at the beginning of your project. Because if you know, for example, that these colors are way too garish or they're just going to be way too hard on your eyes or any of those things, they can all be changed and named right here. You can create your own custom color palette presets. You can name them and you can change as many that are available. If you don't want to see that many colors, you can reduce it to eight. If you want to see the entire palette of choices, you can have a ridiculous amount. You can also have a number of tints. So instead of just having those colors that are available, you can have tints of those colors. So this is twice as many tints. This is four times as many tints. You can see a ton of options and things that are available here. And if you want those colors to only show up by name as opposed to simply the color by itself, now when we go up to our color palette, you'll see those color names are available and they can be anything we want as well. All right, once you've made all the custom colorization changes to your project that you want, we can come down here to our preferences presets and save all those changes in presets. There's a few down here to choose from already, or you can store your own. You can rename your own that you've already stored, and of course you can delete them. All right, this is a great place to stop. We're going to move on to the next video where we're going to explore all those changes in Cubase 10.5 and all those new workflow and feature enhancements.